Hey friends, welcome back to my sewing room. My name is Becca and in today's video we are going to tackle clue one for the size large puzzle mystery quilt from Cotton Cuts for the fall 2020. This puzzle mystery quilt is entitled Are You Game? And I've got my clue package, so let's dive in. Each of your clue packages will look a little bit like this. You'll have a baggie with all of your items inside. On one side you're going to have a sheet of instructions and on the other side you're going to have a piece of cardboard that holds all of your pre-cut pieces all together. In month one though, you're going to have a little fabric chart kind of behind all your fabrics listed here. You'll want to keep a hold of this because this is going to help you remember what is fabric A, B, C, D, and F throughout the entire 10 month program. So don't lose this. It's important. When I'm sewing, I usually just like to lift up the lid on my machine and set it up here so that I can refer back to that. The colorway that I'm doing is Team Azul and it's all batiks and if you are new to my channel let me just tell you I have a fascination with batik fabric so I'm super excited to see how this clue is going to go together. The first thing I like to do when it's time to assemble my clue is just to take a little bit of time to just kind of starch my pieces. So I'm going to lay them all out on my little rotating ironing mat. This is the turntable system from Martelli Notions and I'm gonna douse them with a healthy douse of some best press and we're gonna apply a hot iron to it just so that each of my pieces have a little bit of extra body. Let's kick it into high gear, listen to some music, and get these ironed. Now that I have all of these pieces nice and pressed, let's follow our instructions to assemble our clues. I've got my handy dandy turning mat here which is going to be super convenient because I feel like I'm a little angly challenged so I can assemble how the clues are going to go together facing me and then I can spin it around so you guys can see what it should look like. If this is your first puzzle mystery quilt, let me walk you through what you're going to see on your sheet of paper. This is your instruction sheet. On the front side of the sheet of paper, you have the top section and the bottom section. This top section here shows you what your clues will look like when they're all assembled, and the bottom section shows you which fabrics you should have and how many of each one you should have. On the back side of the piece of paper, you have all of the instructions to put your clue together. This information is not reusable. You won't be able to use this to remake the quilt because they don't tell you how to cut the fabric. That's all secret. But what it does tell you is how to assemble your pieces of fabric, which way to press your seams, and how to trim down your block. Although I'm going to tell you the size that it says your block should be squared up or trimmed down to is usually not what I get. But don't worry, if your blocks come up a little bit shorter than what the instructions say, just don't stress about it because I promise you I've done several of these and I always get that result. And in the end, these quilts go together anyway. 
So don't stress about that. All right, so let's take our instructions and get started. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna read off the instructions, I'm gonna show you what the clue will look like, then I'll sew it together, and we'll get through each one of these steps so that I can show you all of my clues all done at the end. We're gonna make two different clues this month, a 1A and a 1B, so let's work on our clue 1A first. It says in step one to grab your E triangles and your F triangles and put them together to make two half square triangle units and you're going to press towards the E triangle. So let's look at this card and find what is fabric E. Looks like this is my fabric E and this is my fabric F. So we're gonna pull two of the triangles that are fabric E and two of the triangles that are fabric F, just like so. And we're basically just gonna sew these together to make half square triangles and we're going to press it towards E. So this is my dark one. Now we've got our two half square triangle units and we wanna press them towards our fabric E, which is my darker fabric. So I'm just gonna lay my half square triangle units on my surface. I'm gonna put my finger in between the two layers and make sure that fabric E is on top. And I'm just gonna push it open and lightly tap down and crease it with my thumbnail so that it lays a little bit flatter. I find with batiks you can finger press them quite nicely, but even though you can finger press them, it really is worth the time to take a hot iron and just set it on that seam because then you're going to get the block to lay even flatter. Here are my two half square triangle units, and in the next step, we're gonna use those because we're gonna take a C square, like this, and we're gonna orient our fabrics so that we're adding the C square to the left of those half square triangle units. So this is what your clue should look like when it's sewn together. Once you've done that, the instructions say to press this towards your C square. So I'm gonna lay my clues down with fabric C on top and gently push it over with my fingertips, crease it with my thumbnail, being careful not to stretch the fabric, just kind of creasing this, applying a little bit of pressure, and then locking in that nice flat seam with a hot iron. We can set these aside for now, we'll come back to them later. The next step is to take our A rectangles and our B rectangles and we're going to sew them together to make a unit that looks like this. We're going to make two of them, so I'm going to make little piles of two. We're going to have A and then B and then A again and then B again. So when you sew this together, you should have two units that look like that. You can just sew all of these pairs together so you have an A and a B together, and then combine two sets of two to make your strips. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to daisy chain all of these together so that I have an A and a B joined to each other. These aren't directional fabrics, so I don't have to worry about them going in opposite directions. And quite honestly, even if it was directional fabric, I don't know how these are going to go into the quilt when it's done, so it doesn't matter if some are up or down or all turned around. Now that we have all these joined together, I just want to line it up with another section. So I want to take two of the pairs and sew them together and just make sure that no two fabrics are touching. We don't want them to be the same. We want it to go A, B, A, B. So I'm going to sew it on so that it continues that theme. Alternating A and B. We're going to do that twice. Here is one. Okay, here they both are all sewn together. 
and the instructions say to press this towards the right. So I'm just going to lay down the A fabric that's in the leftmost position and just kind of play with the seams a little bit so that I can make sure all the seams are going off to the right. And I'm just going to press them down with the pad of my finger just to kind of get the seam started that way. You can see that actually makes these lay pretty flat because they're petites and they finger press nicely. But again, we're going to convince that to lay right where we pushed it with our fingers with our hot iron. Now it wants us to take these units and sew them so that we've got them in the middle. And then down at the bottom, we have the two clues that we sewed together in step one and two. And then we're going to take a C rectangle and put it across the top of the block. And we're going to make two of these units just like this. This is going to be our clue 1A. So I'm going to sew this together and then I'm going to add this on to the bottom. Now that I have the top and the middle sewn together, the instructions don't say which way to press these, but I'm going to press to the top in this case. Now I'm going to add this onto the bottom. I continue the theme that I started with pressing all of the fabric towards the top of each of these clues. And once I finger press them, then it's going to be time to iron them with my hot iron. There is our clue 1A. Let's set this aside and work on clue 1B. For clue 1B, it wants us to make four half square triangle units using our E and C fabric. So let's just sew those together. Once these are all assembled, the instructions say to press it towards the C triangle, which is this lighter fabric up here. So again, we're just going to lay it so that the lighter fabric is on top, put our fingers between the layers, and then gently use our finger to crease the fabrics so that they're open. This is going to push the bulk of that seam over to the side of the half square triangle where the C fabric is. And in this case, C fabric is my pretty purple fabric that has little dragonflies in it. And now that I have these all open, we're just going to take a hot iron, set it right on top of that seam. We're not going to move the iron around. We're just going to pick it up and lift it down right on top of that seam to make it lay super flat. I'm really loving how these batik fabrics look. All of our half square triangle units are nice and assembled, so we're just going to set these aside. Step two of clue 1B wants us to take our F fabric, which is here, and sew it on top of our D fabric, which is here, so that you have a unit that looks like that. Now the instructions in this case don't tell you to press towards fabric F or D. It just says to press toward the darker of the two fabrics. And in this case, I'm going to treat my blue as the darker fabric. We're going to finger press them and then heat press flat like a sheet of paper. Then our final step is to take those little rectangles that we just made and lay it out so that fabric F is on top. And then we're going to want to take those half square triangle units that we made and set them up so that the E portion of the half square triangle unit 
is framing that rectangle and your clue when you sew it together should look something like that. Now, I don't know about you, but this is starting to look like the makings of a churn dash. So let's sew this side together first. The instructions don't tell us which way to press them. So I'm going to try to reduce a little bit of the bulk here and press the fabric in towards the middle. But you can do it whichever way the fabric wants to lay. Whichever way works for you. I'll still have a little bit of bulk right here, but I like to reduce the bulk where my triangle points are. Now we're going to add these onto the block. And can you believe we're almost done? And then for this one, I'm going to press it with my finger so that it goes in towards the middle again. And now that I have these assembled, I'm going to take a minute to really convince those seams to lay the way I pushed them using my hot iron. So this is our finished clue 1B, and it looks just like that. And I swear to you, that's going to make a churn dash block somehow. I guess we'll have to wait till month 10 to see if I'm right. So here's our two clues. We've got clue 1A and clue 1B, two of each, super simple, super easy. And for those of you that are following along with my small puzzle mystery quilt videos, you'll actually see that the clues for the large quilt are different than the clues for the small quilt. It's not like you're just taking the small quilt and doing more. You're actually making a different quilt. If this is something that you are interested in, you'd like to sign up for, I do believe that Cotton Cuts, as of the recording of this video, still has some colorways open. I'm putting right here on the screen for you a list of all of the colorways that are available for the Cotton Cuts Puzzle Mystery Quilt for the Are You Game, also known as the Fall 2020 Puzzle Mystery Quilt. You can hop over to CottonCuts.com to sign up. And when you do, don't forget to put in the coupon code at checkout, We Love Becca. And when they ship you your first clue, you're going to get a little surprise. That's everything I've got for this video. Thanks for sewing along with me today. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, consider doing so. I do go live every Friday night where I do a project from start to finish. And I'd love to sew along with you live on YouTube on Friday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. I'll see you guys all on Friday.